guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. We are back today to review a bunch of new and or viral products all in one video. For this series, I normally just post one video for all beauty categories all together, but there were so many new makeup launches and viral makeup products this time around that I decided to make makeup its own separate video. So in today's video, I'll be reviewing new and or viral hair care, skin care, body care, and fragrance, and then the next video will be reviewing makeup. All right. Let's jump into it. Let's kick this video off with hair care. First up is a new launch from Way, which is their anti-dandruff shampoo. This contains two ingredients that are designed to help to minimize itching, flaking, irritation, and dandruff. And those ingredients are 2% salicylic acid and propanediol caprolate. I don't have dandruff, so I can't speak to how well this works for that, but I do definitely have an oily scalp. And by the time I wash my hair, I definitely have quite a bit of buildup since I only wash twice a week. So because this has ingredients in it that are just great for scalp health and scalp cleanliness overall, I still wanted to test it out and see if it's something that just made my scalp feel nice and refreshed, if you will. And it definitely does. So if you have a really oily scalp, if you have quite a bit of buildup on the scalp often and those things lead to itching or irritation or flakiness, then using a shampoo with ingredients like this can be super helpful. The K18 Detox Shampoo also has salicylic acid, so so if you are currently using that, if you own that, I would say definitely just stick with that. No need to switch to this, but I would be curious to know if any of you have tested this out and you do have dandruff, how well this has worked for you for that purpose. So if you happen to be one of those people, let us know in the comments below. But a good shampoo, let's move on. Next up is Saltaire. I have two different product lines from them. First is their Recover and Restore Damage Repair Shampoo and Conditioner, and second is their moisture bound hydrating shampoo and conditioner. I have seen this brand on social media so many times. I feel like people are definitely very intrigued by it because the packaging is absolutely amazing. Like they for sure win for best packaging ever. It's very aesthetically pleasing. The type of products that you want to have sitting in your shower. And they just recently launched in store and online at Target. So they are officially not only an affordable brand, but now one that is accessible and easy to pick up at the drugstore. So the moisture bound shampoo and conditioner contain a nourishing blend of oils to add moisture to dry parched hair while minimizing frizz and adding shine. The standout oils in this set include Manoy oil, Pequi oil, Abyssinian oil, and avocado oil. I wasn't expecting the shampoo to have this kind of consistency since it's something that is claiming to add moisture and hydration. I thought that it was going to end up being a bit of a creamier shampoo, which is typically something that I like to steer clear of because of the fact that I do have an oilier scalp, but it is a clear gel-like consistency that lathers really well and isn't the kind of formula that can leave residue behind on the hair that can leave your scalp looking greasy. So even though this is something that again is claimed to add moisture, it definitely didn't make my hair look greasy any more quickly than it normally does. I would say it was just the same for me as it always is on wash day. And the conditioner is really nice as well. It is a little bit lighter weight than I was anticipating, again, just because because of the claims, but it's not like it's a super lightweight conditioner by any means. It definitely conditions to the level that I need and I liked it. And I think aside from how cute the packaging is, the other best part about these is that they smell so, so good. The keynotes of this one are delicate rose, jasmine petals, and creamy sandalwood. So elevated for the drugstore. And for the Recover and Restore Damage Repair Set, this is said to contain a bond multiplier complex that will help to repair and strengthen compromised hair while shea butter and marine extracts lock in moisture. In looking at their website, they don't actually call out what that bond multiplier complex is. So I would just take that with a grain of salt. I wouldn't necessarily consider this to be a set that is actually going to repair damage, but nonetheless, it still is a nice set. And that doesn't mean that it's bad if you have damaged hair. I just am always wary of brands that make claims like that without actually explaining how the product is working. And this shampoo is not completely clear and gel-like in the way that the moisture bound shampoo is, but it still is one that's lightweight and does a good job of cleaning my scalp. So I would say just a really nice one all around for most scalp types. And the conditioner is definitely a little bit lighter weight than the moisture bound conditioner. So if I had to choose, I would choose the moisture bound conditioner, but again, it still 
is a really nice one. I just personally love a really creamy conditioner. So while I wouldn't consider this brand to be the absolute best hair care brand I've ever tried, I do still think that their products are solid. And the fact that you can get the shampoo and conditioner for $12 a piece is amazing. I love the elevated experience that these products give you with the packaging and the fragrances. And they're just really, really nice and self care esque. So, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on shampoo and conditioner, definitely a brand worth looking into. Let's move on to skincare next. I have a few different products from Supergoop. The first is a new sunscreen from them called their Daily Dose Hydroceramide Boost Plus SPF 40 Sunscreen Oil. This is a chemical sunscreen, so the active ingredients are avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene, and this has tons of incredible ingredients, especially some really nice nourishing oils. Things like rosehip oil, jojoba oil, macadamia oil, soy bean oil, I wrote down jojoba oil twice. Squalene, ceramides, castor oil, hyaluronic acid, pre and postbiotics, and it is fragrance and essential oil free. I was really hesitant to try this out because I am not a facial oil girl during the day. It just is not really something that agrees with my skin type, given the fact that I definitely lean oily, but I have to say I was pleasantly surprised by how lightweight and non-greasy of an oil this is. It definitely still feels like an oil, but it dries down really nicely so that it doesn't necessarily look like you have just slathered your face in oils. So if you have dry, dehydrated, flaky skin and you really like facial oils, I actually think that you would love this. It's not something that I'm going to continue to wear just again because of my skin type, but that doesn't mean that some of you won't love it because I bet a lot of you will. The other sunscreen that they launched is the Daily Dose Bioretinol and Mineral SPF 40 Sunscreen Fluid. The active ingredient in this is zinc oxide, so it's a completely mineral sunscreen, and the bioretinol is bakuchiol, so it's not actually retinol in this sunscreen. I was very confused when I first saw that, and then I was like, oh, it's bakuchiol. Bakuchiol has been said to be a natural alternative to retinol because it's supposed to give some similar benefits, but there's definitely not enough research out there to prove those claims or to prove that bakuchiol is just as good as retinol. I'm gonna venture to say it's not, but that doesn't mean it's not a nice ingredient to include in a sunscreen, given that we obviously don't want retinol in our sunscreen anyway. And then aside from that, this contains L-carnosine, olive esters, green tea extract, and is also fragrance and essential oil free. This is an ultra lightweight watery liquid and it is tinted. So this tint I would consider to be fair to light and neutral in undertone, but it's super, super sheer. So on my skin, it doesn't show up at all in terms of color coverage. My guess is that the pigment is just there to remove any white cast from the zinc oxide and make it apply transparently. I love how lightweight this is, but I will say that there is something just like a tiny bit oily about the texture. So if you're not into that in a sunscreen, then I would steer clear of this. It's not super bad. It's not crazy greasy on the skin or anything like that, but if you're really, really picky about the way a sunscreen feels, I think you will pick up on that slight oiliness. But if not, again, I think that this is a sunscreen that a lot of you would really love given the fact that it's so lightweight and it has a really, really nice glowy finish on the skin. So some nice sunscreen launches from Supergoop. Hi, baby. Don't lick my makeup, girl. Wanna sit with me? Wanna sit right here? Good girl. The last Supergoop launch is their Bright Eyed 100% Mineral Eye Cream SPF 40. The active ingredient in this is zinc oxide and it contains probiotics, green tea extract, caffeine, and is fragrance and essential oil free. I was looking at some of the reviews of this product and I think it's one that was reformulated. So I am not sure what they changed. I didn't try the original formulation. <laughs> but I can speak to the reformulation and whatever they changed must have worked because I really, really like this eye cream. It's something that I would consider to be a lightweight cream, so it definitely is a little bit thicker, but it's not something that feels super heavy or too thick to wear during the day. It also does have a little bit of a tint to ensure that there's no white cast, but on my skin tone, again, it's not something that shows up at all. And while this is definitely not going to be something that lightens your under eye circles permanently, while it's on, it definitely does help to just brighten the eye area and make it look really healthy and fresh and luminous. And at 
feels really nice. It's nice and moisturizing. So I was pleasantly surprised by this product. I don't know why I wasn't really expecting to love it, but I do think it's really nice. Another eye product that I tested out is a new launch from The Ordinary, which is their multi-peptide eye serum. So I wasn't really sure what to think about this at first, but in looking at the ingredients, it's clear that this was specifically formulated with the eye area in mind. It contains ingredients like niacinamide, peptides, caffeine, AGG, galloglucoside, and arginine. And on their website, they actually say that this does have a higher price point than most of their other products because of the fact that it contains a higher concentration of active ingredients. So that definitely is something that I appreciate seeing as a consumer, that they're acknowledging the fact that it's pricier, but for a reason. And this is very lightweight. It's liquidy and almost a little bit watery, but I really like that because it's something that you can easily add to your routine without having to remove anything else. Like it's not a thick, creamy eye cream that may replace something that you're already using and loving. You can just add it underneath any moisturizers, any other serums, and help to treat that eye area. I haven't been using this long enough to see any noticeable difference in terms of results, but I will definitely keep you guys posted as time goes on. I feel like I'll for sure have to use an entire bottle of this to really see a difference since I don't have heavy fine lines around the eyes at this point in my life, not yet. But I have definitely seen some positive reviews where people feel like this has made a noticeable difference in the health and just like youthfulness of the eye area. So promising. I'm excited to keep using it. Do I think that this is a 100% necessary product? Definitely not. If you're already using something like their Buffet Serum or their Copper Peptide Serum, this isn't something that you have to add to your routine. But if you feel like you have a lot of concerns with the skin around your eyes, Again, this is something that you could easily add to hopefully start to see some noticeable improvement. Next up is the reformulated or supercharged It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream. The original Confidence in a Cream moisturizer was my absolute favorite moisturizer back in the day. Back before I started my tretinoin journey and ended up with really, really sensitive skin, I freaking loved this moisturizer because it just felt like a luxury product. But once I started tretinoin and time went on and my skin became increasingly sensitive, I had to stop using it because it does contain fragrances and essential oils and it was really irritating my skin. So when I got this in PR and saw that it was reformulated, I was like, okay, I have to try it out and see what they changed because I loved the original so much. So I decided to test it out, see how my skin responded. And if it didn't work out, I would just keep using it as a neck cream. So they're calling this supercharged because they increased the concentrations of niacinamide, squalane, and their peptide complex. And this has tons of amazing ingredients like niacinamide, squalane, shea butter, hyaluronic acid, ceramide NP, adenosine, colloidal oatmeal, and peptides. This still does have added fragrance. The fragrance ingredients are towards the very bottom of the label, which is good. So it's not like fragrance is the third ingredient on the label, but still unfortunately is not fragrance free. And I say unfortunately because this did still irritate my skin a little bit and cause some stinging and burning immediately when I applied it. So I was like, dang it, because it really does feel super nice. From their description on the website, they say that it contains the quick absorbing formula that you know and love. So still quick absorbing, which I would agree with, but it now has a silky cream texture. So while I cannot continue using this on my face and I will have to switch it to a neck cream, if you don't have sensitive skin and you're looking for a moisturizer that feels like a luxury moisturizer, this is definitely one to look into. And the last skincare product is a new launch from Crave Beauty. They have officially come out with their new sunscreen since having to discontinue their last one. And this is the Crave Beauty Beat the Sun Lightweight Sunscreen with Broad Spectrum SPF 40. I'm not sure what day this video is going live. It may be before this sunscreen is officially available. The launch date is February 23rd. But of course I wanted to show it to you in action so that you could figure out if you wanted to purchase it on launch day or pass. So I never tested out the original Crave Beauty sunscreen, but it did contain next generation chemical filters that you can't find in US sunscreens. And you guys know I love Asian sunscreens. I have an entire video where I share my top 10 favorites. So I will list that below if you haven't seen that yet. But what is different about this sunscreen is that it no longer contains those filters. Instead, it contains chemical filters that are approved for use here in the US, including homosalate, octisalate, avobenzone, and octocrylene. And then aside from that, in terms of inactive ingredients, this contains beetroot extract, hyaluronic acid, and vitamin E. 
I absolutely love the way that this sunscreen feels. It's a lightweight lotion that's really soft and silky. It applies nicely. It doesn't pill. It doesn't streak. All around, I would say the texture feels great. Because of the texture of this, I was expecting it to have a little bit more of a natural finish on the skin, but it's actually pretty glowy. So if you don't like sunscreens to enhance the glow of your skin at all, if you have incredibly oily skin, then you probably won't love that about it. But I really like it. I think it looks nice and it's definitely a nice sunscreen to wear underneath makeup. Makeup applies beautifully on top of it, and I love anything that will enhance the glow of my makeup without looking greasy, which it definitely doesn't. So overall, this is a really nice sunscreen. I, of course, would prefer if it was an SPF 50 instead of an SPF 40, but it is a good one. Is it something that I would replace any of my favorite Asian sunscreens with? Mm. I don't really think so. I don't feel like this does anything for me that I don't already have, but I have a giant sunscreen collection. So keep that in mind. If you don't really own a lot of sunscreens and you're looking for something that is lightweight, absorbs really nicely, just doesn't really feel like you're wearing a lot of product, is really soft and glowy, then you will love it. Okay. All right, let's wrap up the video with body care. First up is definitely not a new product, but one of the most hyped up body care products I feel like I've seen in a long time. It is the Naturium Glow Getter Multi Oil Body Wash. And yes, this is a brand new bottle. I was using it at my parents' house every single time that I was there. So my mom got it for me for Christmas, but I have a lot of other body washes to get through first before I can add this back. The two kind of highlights of this ingredients list include oils and plant extracts. So this has rosehip oil, jojoba oil, squalane, apple fruit extract, coconut extract, apricot extract, and peach extract. And the reason why so many people rave about this body wash is definitely because of the consistency. It's kind of like an oil to gel, but it's not greasy oily or anything like that. It's just super, super soft and silky and feels really nice, but still lathers up really well. So overall, I would say it's just a really nice nourishing body wash that's not going to strip your skin or leave it feeling dry. It's fragrance free. It kind of has like a tiny bit of a light peachy scent in my opinion, like a tiny bit fruity, but barely. It's like barely there. And that's probably my only complaint. I would love if this had just like a little bit of a nice fragrance to it because I love fragrance in my body washes, but I know that that doesn't work for everybody. So if you have sensitive skin and you need a fragrance-free body wash, look no further. But otherwise it is one that I really like. I've also heard tons of amazing things about the Naturium body lotion. This one is called their Biolipid Restoring Body Lotion. It has safflower seed oil, shea butter, moringa oil, niacinamide, rose fruit oil, panthenol, sodium PCA, squalane, hyaluronic acid, and all of M1000 in it. So lots of nice ingredients, and we don't usually see that in body lotions at the drugstore. So I really love that using a lotion like this is like, I don't know, knowing that you're still taking care of your body in the same way that you are your skin. And overall, this feels really nice. It's perfectly moisturizing. It's like a thicker lotion or a lighter weight cream, but I really love it for every day. It absorbs really nicely. It's not sticky, no issues whatsoever. But again, my only complaint is that it's fragrance free. I also really like to have a nice fragrance in my body lotion. So I would love if they came out with a fragrance version of this, Elsie. <laughs> like something light and vanilla-y would be great. And last but not least is a fragrance brand that has so much hype. It is Kayali. I actually have two different fragrances from them. Vanilla 28 and a little mini of Eden Juicy Apple. Vanilla 28 is a warm and spicy fragrance with key notes of Vanilla Orchid, Tonka Absolute, whatever that is, and Amber Woods. And it smells amazing. This is like the perfect wintertime fragrance for me. It's cozy. I freaking love vanilla. You guys know that. But it's not the type of vanilla that's really, really sweet and sugary, like a vanilla frosting. You get that warmth and spiciness with it, which I love, which is why I feel like it's so nice for winter. But the other reason why I love this fragrance is that it's perfect for layering with other fragrances to create something unique and a little bit more dimensional. So I actually love mixing it with this juicy apple fragrance right here. And this one is a fruity floral with key notes of juicy red apple, wild berries, and jasmine. Oh my gosh, it's so good too. And again, it's definitely not too sweet at all, even though it is fruity. 
It's like perfectly seductively fruity. So whether you're using them on their own or together, they're both really, really nice fragrances. And I totally understand why this is a brand that so many people love because these smell so good and now I wanna buy others. The only downside to these is that they definitely don't last a super long time. I don't know that I have that many fragrances that do truly last a very long time, but if you're looking for one of those perfumes that just lingers all day long, this won't be for you. So I wanted to make sure I called that out. All right, and with that, we have made it through all of the new and or viral beauty launches that I wanted to talk through for this video. Again, make sure to stay tuned for the next one because that will be makeup focused. But if you enjoyed this, you know the drill. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to test out any of these products or if you already own any and what your thoughts are. As always, everything is going to be listed and linked in order of mention in my description box below. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But other than that, I hope you have a great few days. Elsie, do you have any final words? Okay. Bye.